Here's what we're working with with the September inflation numbers from the Bureau of Labor Statistics. Um, the headline number for inflation is 2.4% rise on an annual basis, while the core number is 3.3%. So headline is a little bit hotter than expectations. Core is also a little bit hotter than expectations. Um, I, I will add in August, we had 2.5% headline inflation. So this is a, a slight drop down from that. Um, prices, price inflation remaining pretty stable, another 0.2% rise on the month. For September. That was the same as we saw in August, the same we saw in July. Uh, so pretty steady clip right now. But, you know, again, slightly warmer, let's call it warmer than economists expected for this. Really, really not a lot off the headline numbers. But how do you interpret these so far as I continue to look through what we're what we're seeing here? Simone, I would agree with your uh, assessment of warmer. I think this was a, a slight surprise to the upside. I don't know if it's a if it's a blowout. I wouldn't know. I wouldn't say that it's something that necessarily is going to change the Fed's calculus dramatically in and of itself. Um, but I think it does point to the the facts we were talking about just a second ago, which is that you know the U.S. economy is continuing to do pretty well uh, overall. And you know the Federal Reserve. We know from looking at the the minutes yesterday, the minutes that were just released, we know that the Federal Reserve actually had quite a pretty robust debate internally about whether to go twenty five or fifty last time. And the fact that they went fifty, I think, gives the Fed some leeway to you know to to not have to be quite as aggressive uh, with cuts <clears throat> in the latter half of this year. So um, you know, our view internally has been we'll probably get two more cuts this year of twenty five basis points apiece. Um, I don't know if this print is enough to throw that off course or not. Uh, I, I, my initial read is probably not. Um, but nonetheless, I do think the Fed has optionality here, can, especially if we get you know strong another strong payrolls uh, number this Friday. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to be uh, waiting a couple of minutes. Let the traders let that sink in a little bit before I refresh my CME Fed watch to see what they're thinking as far as rate cuts are concerned. I wanted to point out the uh, shelter index here. Shelter has been the thorn in inflation side for a very long time. It's been running very hot and we're seeing it fall under 5% this month. So for an annual rise in shelter prices, we're sitting at 4.9%. So that that's positive news. Uh, it rose 0.2% on the month. So starting to rise at a slower clip, I would say. Last month, the annual rise in shelter was 5.2%. So a little bit of a swing down there. Um, this is one of those areas that has really been helping fuel that core inflation much higher than the Fed would like to see it. Uh, we talk about the Fed's 2% target, and we see that headline number that's so close to 2%. And you're thinking, wow, look how close they are. Of course, the Fed is talking about core inflation, which strips out energy, which strips out food prices, because those are more volatile. And what we're seeing is the energy index is helping bring down that inflation on the headline side. So in core, we don't have that same downward pressure. And that's why we're still seeing it up in the threes. So Let's talk a little bit about that shelter index because, you know, I, I try to find the silver lining in here. We're under 5% for an annual rise. It's it's slightly silver, right? Yeah, sure. I, I would say it's a silver lining of sorts. <laughs> I think one thing we need to keep in mind with the shelter component is that it's it's pretty lagging. Um, you know, this is mm -hmm. uh, one of those pieces. C CPI is far from perfect. Uh, even the Fed would admit that, I think, in, in an honest moment. Um, it's a... It's a uh, a data point that uh, was created a long time ago and arguably hasn't kept up with some of the changes in our economy the last few decades. I would I'd look at the shelter component and say this is a really lagging one um, for people that have been you know in in that market. They know that um, uh, particularly in certain areas, rent has come down uh, quicker than that indicator had suggested. So you might be catching. It's good that it's in a downdraft, but you might also be catching what's really been known to the market for some time. Um, that's why, you know, uh, some of us like to follow, you know, uh, higher frequency indicators of, of rents um, than what the th is going into the CPI number. And, and and we've seen that, you know, start to been coming down for some time now. Um, so, but, but yeah, no, I think we need to celebrate where we can. Um, housing affordability is an enormous issue for many Americans um, and has a huge impact on consumer spending, particularly at the lower at the lower end. Um, so any kind of relief, quote unquote, we get would be welcome. But remember the fact that it's going up by less than 5%, it's still going up by more than, <laughs> than more than inflation writ large is going up. So it's, it's, they're changing the rate of change is accelerating, but that isn't very helpful when you think about, you know, pre pandemic to now 
prices are up, you know, well into double digits, well over 20% uh, in absolute terms. Yeah, I, I gave traders a couple of minutes to let it sit in and just, well, I'll continue refreshing this as we talk more, but just refreshing the CME Fed watch to see what their thoughts are on November. Um, more people switched over into the 25 basis point camp from no cut at all. Mm, so we had about one in one in four was the probability for no cut. And now it's one in five. So yeah, we've got an 81% right now probability that we're going to see a 25 basis point cut in November. Um, based off of what we're seeing right now and knowing, you know, we obviously still have a lot more data before that November meeting, but are you, you feeling, you said your group was thinking 25 basis points in November, 25 basis points in December. Yeah. And, and I think, you know, again, probably nothing that we've seen from this initial read would change that view. Um, but it's always, it's always interesting to get the initial reaction from stock and bond markets. And then it's always interesting, in my opinion, to then look 24 hours later after, you know, folks like myself have had time to really digest and think and speak with colleagues and look at our portfolio positioning. And sometimes you get a different reaction. I've noticed this, especially with Fed meetings, where whatever the initial response is to whether it's the Q&A or what have you, mm -hmm. I generally think take a deep breath, turn your screen off, come back to it in a few hours, come back to it the next morning and you know, look at it 48 hours later. And then oftentimes the market will have more convincingly made up its mind on whether it was hawkish or bullish than what the initial response is.